now the door's open. Mm -hmm. The door has, has been blown completely wide open as to what all this means for, mm -hmm. for Kyle Bush and, and RCR. And, and, you know, is he peeking over his shoulder looking to go somewhere else? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't, I personally don't see a scenario where he goes back to Hendrick or Gibbs. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour, presented by NASCAR on Fox. I'm Kevin Harvick. She's Caitlin Vincy, and he's useless. But uh, uh, Mama, Mama Smith. But he set himself up for that. He set himself up oh. for that pre-show. So we're just going to wow. go right off the bat. I've been home all weekend. These two he's have been working, and I'm full of energy and ready to go. I love it, but I'm glad that he's full of energy. That's a good thing because we both like are pretty tired, right? Yeah, <laughs> this makeup is covering a lot of a lot of useless face right yeah. now. Useless face. Yeah, it was, it was a it was a long. He did great. A Trouble. driver intros, by the way. I he got did. to see it first. I was on stage with him. Really? I got to introduce him. Yeah. We're just appearing everywhere together now. Yeah, we, we even just plugged the, the pod. I'm part time. We did yeah, plug yeah. the pod on stage for yeah. the fans. Wow. So They're excited. I, I love it. Yeah. yeah. You are part time. Well, you guys, you guys do a great job. I'm glad you guys are still yeah. at the track and it's in there digging. Good. I spent 20 some years yeah. in there mm -hmm. grinding away every week. Yeah. I think they said it was the, it was the first time that, that I hadn't been, um, at the at the uh, racetrack in, gosh, I don't know, twenty some years. It was pretty hot. It was really hot actually out there in Iowa. So I was not ready for. I was not ready for that. Yeah. The travel back was wild. Travel back was wild. Travel back was wild. My yep. plane at SHR. They gave me a ride home. Thank you very much, SHR. And then the the plane had a malfunction, so we had to jump on to uh, mm. the victory flight. You'll oh, have that. That's You'll always have fun. That. It was fun. Well, at yeah. least you made it home. That's yeah. it. I'm glad I you guys made it home. Me too. I was like sprinting from baggage claim. I swear, Charlotte is the worst airport. I know people say that, but it really is terrible. Like they take forever to get the bags. It's all under construction. <laughs> they have not made it any more functional since they updated it. And I guess I'm spoiled because we, we go all the time and, and just check our bags. <laughs> and most of the time we don't, but when, when we do have bags, but most of the time we don't check our bags. Mm -hmm. So we have yeah. just a carry on. So oh. did you pack a lot of luggage? I did pack a lot of luggage and they also busted a container of self tanner. So as I'm pulling my bag through the oh, airport, it was no. leaking. leaking? <laughs> it almost looked red. I'm like, I swear there's not a dead body in there. Oh my God. That's. <laughs> Awful. Yeah, I'm pretty annoyed. Do you have self tanner as well? <laughs> no, I, I don't need. I've never needed self tanner or uh, sunscreen. I'll show you my legs. I'll prove to you that I've never had self tanner. <laughs> White, well, like the I don't have any told, anymore either. My wife told me the other day. She's like, "Oh my god, when was the last time your feet have actually been in the sun?" Mm, you have a pool. Go sit outside. I by did. That we thing. sat outside by the pool yesterday. That's what we did yesterday. We That's so drove nice. home from Dominion. Got home and my kids were they were so happy because I, I got to swim in the swimming pool with Aww. them. So they were That's they awesome. were pretty pumped up. Not we're, not something that we normally do on a Sunday. So that was fair. that was very interesting. We're gonna talk about your first weekend not at the racetrack, but we encourage everyone to keep following us, of course, and subscribing on YouTube and liking mm -hmm. the podcast. Um, we've been so happy to have so many closers support over the how many months it's been. Yeah, closers has been great. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have Word of the Week anymore. I know, that's sad. Which is a, a bummer. Uh, it is a bummer. But you guys keep engaging and... Oh, I got an idea. Oh, you got an oh, idea? Oh, wait, let's, Kevin right, has an idea. Got? I learned that this weekend. I, You know, we should come up with a new word. Oh. And we have to use it in a sentence on Twitter. Okay. Or social media on, on the socials, on social and, you, and I can I can describe something at some point. It seemed like people. There's a lot of people on social media during the races. I, I had no you idea. You didn't know. You had yeah, no you idea. Had no idea. Like, apparently, everybody's pretty interactive <laughs> during the races. Easy. You see yes. a lot out there. We yeah, got to come up with something. That. Maybe that's not not the best thing to do, but we can come up with some sort we of do a new social uh, media interaction. I like of that. some way, shape, or form. So they, they yeah. also they also <clears> made <throat> mention. Uh, of maybe doing a little watch party. We might we might oh. need to figure something like that oh. out. Everyone go over to the Harvick the Harvick household and <laughs> wait a minute. I don't know if he wants us all there. I don't care. <laughs> he has good food and good wine. So you're saying that you guys would come over to the house? Yeah, and, and watch we would the do race it. with you. Oh, that would be fun. That yeah. would be fun, actually. Why not? Did you is, is there ever a weekend no, 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 that you guys don't the, go to the racetrack? Yeah, I'm not at yeah. Pocono. Oh, you're not. Yeah, me neither. You're not going to Pocono no. either. <laughs> How many weeks is that? When is that on the schedule? Like, My uh, schedule like, ended, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, a few like weeks. No, it's like three weeks away. 
Okay. Maybe four. Because yeah, we've got after Chicago? Well, we'll have to get in creative, Nashville, Chicago. I'm not very good at, so no, that's you guys, why that's you guys we're here are the to help. creators. That's what we're here for. Yeah. We got a good show on out. tap, guys, though. Yeah. I will recap. We'll mm-hmm. talk a little MTJ retirement officially. He listened to you. He gave yeah. his announcement. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mama Social Sips. Uh, but first, we want to do a little tribute to NASCAR Race Hub. Just last week, we had our final show. 15 years the show had been on the air. I'd been on it for 13. Um, it was a great show. I, I said in the final one that I was really proud of the storytelling that we did on there for a long time because it wasn't just in depth with drivers and crew chiefs. It was road crew and pit crew and industry personnel and any breaking news. We always had the story and there was just a lot of different features and things we did on that show over the years and the production team. I mean, doing a daily show is really hard and they work sometimes around the clock, especially the marquee events like Daytona and stuff. They're, they're here almost overnight working on pieces and making sure everything was ready for the studio show. So really proud of the work we put in. Sad to see it go, but (laughs) it was awesome. I I think for me, one of the things I I appreciate looking back on it was the way the studio changed. Yeah. Like like, a lot of iterations. Yeah. Like where Jimmy was and basically (laughs) that was as a kid, that was like one of my favorite parts because he was the first like brash guy like he did not care oh yeah he talked so much shit about everybody and then he'd have to deal with it <laughs> yes. on the race day. it was so great i, I miss jimmy spencer yeah That's and good. i walked into the studio and there were so many people here mm-hmm. uh, for for the, for the last show and and we did a we did a few segments but i got to see jimmy spencer and hermie sadler and so many of the yeah. people that that had been around and and i guess for 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 myself i didn't really realize that adam had been there since the beginning yeah he was Pretty there for the, the like original show yeah. and then yeah he, there was a number of people who were on it almost and the he whole had hair i didn't years. realize that he had hair i didn't realize i was the same time. guy because he had hair same yeah guy. <laughs> yeah oh yes we've all physically changed over the years <laughs> yeah it, so uh my hair's gotten a lot thinner too so i'm not going to say that i'm i'm not uh, totally ripping on adam but yeah you know i think i think that the biggest thing was just seeing everybody together for that that one final time because everybody put so much time and effort into mm-hmm. hub and the fans depended on hub for sure you know, to, to get their news and 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 the things that that happened so um interesting landscape things change things progress and move on and mm-hmm. uh we'll see see how it all moves forward so we better make sure we do a good job that's right here on happy hour that's mean? right yeah we've, we've got it covered yeah, it's us right. and, and bob we're out here. Bob, we're well, we, doing things. we know if if, Bob, if if we have to dig up information, Bob Pockers Bob's is got digging it. up the information, I saw him that's for sure. At the track this weekend, he was in the trenches doing his normal deal. Good. So he is still very much on it, Mr. Bob Pockers. But you, however, were at home, deservedly so. First official weekend of retirement, if you will. How was it? It was strange. It was I, strange. I sat in a chair and watched the race and <laughs> um that for me was was very uh I, I don't even know how to describe it it was it was eye opening i i guess would be the best way to put it because we spent the we spent the morning driving back from dominion so we had to drive 5 hours home yeah. from mm-hmm. from the racetrack so we got home about 1:30 in the afternoon and and my kids were like let's go swimming let's do this but i'm like hold on i had to write my Brad Keselowski questions for for the for the week uh, we have Brad in the in the chair this week uh, doing the interview with, yeah. with him, after, you know, as part of the Thursday show. So that'll be, that'll be great. So I wrote, I said, new routine this week, guys, got to write my questions, get ready for the show on Sunday. And then we can do what, what you guys want to do. So, uh, we spent the, the latter part of the afternoon and evening in the swimming pool, which mm-hmm. was, uh, mm-hmm. always, uh, entertaining and fun. Um, and then I sat and watched the race and, uh, learned that, it was awkward at first, that I, but I figured I could get used to it and, and understand that there is a, a new routine and a new way to go about it. But I'm a race fan, too, so I, I like watching the races. I um, realize that I don't want to watch races with my wife. Uh, Why is and, that? And, well, my wife is brutal. Like, oh. she is just brutal, whether it's the competitors <laughs> or the broadcasters. And she's like, just totally opinionated on pretty much everything that happens. And I, I was, I was kind of set back because she was, it wasn't like we were saying, Oh, you know, I think this, this was good. Maybe not so good. It was just like, Oh, that sucked. That was stupid. What an idiot. 
And, and I'm like, man, you are just I really like that, She's like, I don't have time to think about what I'm going to say. It just is what it is. So if you don't want to watch it with me, go somewhere else. And she finally left and went and watched some Netflix show. So uh, I, I think I, I think I wore her down uh, by the by the time we, we got to to the second half of the race. I love a woman she's with been, strong opinions. Yeah, yeah. She's been watching racing. Her whole life. Yeah, the yeah. whole time. Like she's been watching from that lens for so long. So I think it's interesting now that – so imagine what was being said when you were in the car and mm. whether you were doing well or not. Oh, trust I me. Every, every time I got home, it was going to go two ways. It, the first question was going to be, why did you do this at this <laughs> point? Why didn't you pit? Why didn't you go on this restart? Whatever the scenario was, she, that would it would either be that question or it would be, where'd you finish? <laughs> no. What do you mean, where'd I finish? Well, I didn't have time to watch the race today. We were doing this, this, and this, or they were traveling with Keelan. She'd be like, I, I didn't watch the race today. How, how did you do? How did it go? And I'd have to explain to her what happened. Ah. So those were usually two different conversations okay. because usually I wasn't over the day yet when she would ask, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? And it always ended in, in a unique conversation <laughs> or it would be, I can't believe you didn't watch. She's like, I don't have time to watch. And that was a much easier conversation to actually have. Yeah, so I could see where that um, would be the case. But it was, it was, it was fun and it was a lot of work leading into the to the Fox half of the season to get everything situated and get back. So it was like I'd never really had any time off because right. even though I wasn't driving, it was still a lot of work to to go to the booth and do all the things that we had to do uh, to be into it every week. And and so now it's a much more relaxed atmosphere. So I think I can get used to it. It looked relaxed. We saw the tweets you guys were posting with the red wine. Was that your wine? That or was, was Delaney's wine. Okay, yeah. I was wondering. I was you like, can, I, I wonder if that's his. You can no. tell by the pour. It was a so very was a healthy solid pour. pour. He ain't, yeah, he, he ain't. I want to have wine with her. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we had dinner. We had dinner a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we we all had some some wine. She has a good good taste oh, of wine, and yeah. my parents made you guys a nice cheesecake. Oh, they promised from dinner. Remember that my dad was right. like, "I'm gonna bring." So it's in the. That's really it's in the back. Well, we I love appreciate Mama's that. Parents. That'll that'll be that'll be. Uh, do I get to critique it? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't eat cheesecake. No, he'll make a he'll he'll oh. adjust it for you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah I, I get the feeling that he can pretty much adjust it to whatever I'd like. Yeah, he's a chef. He's yeah. good at that. He's yeah, a chef. Yeah. yeah. Please tell me you saw NASCAR Chasm's tweet of you. I did not. Oh no. Did you see No, it? I didn't see it either. When he said made some remark like, Hey, you can pee in that seat too if you want. <laughs> 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 he is the king of NASCAR satire. I just love that guy. I have That's I have funny. never been able to pee in the seat. Oh, there you go. Ever. I don't think I could relax enough to, to I do could that. never do it. I had never, ever once peed on myself. I know all of them, <laughs> but for the most part, Pretty I much. mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of guys that just I let it go. I love the hard hitting question here. We just learned that about you because that's when, always people wonder about that. Listen, when I was the, when <laughs> I did the most commonly asked question, when I did yeah. interior, like if you don't tell your interior guy that you did that before you, before he, so wait a on, second. That, Have you pulled an interior out that had been peed in? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Are you think protecting so. someone? But a lot of the guy, a lot of, like most of our drivers are like ARCA drivers and stuff. So they're oh. younger. So they probably wouldn't tell me mm. if they did. I got you. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I would roast them if they did. There's a kid that races legend cars. His brother's an open wheel racer don't. and just lets it rip. <laughs> <laughs> lets it rip. Just let it go. That's fun Full for the flow. team. And he's, he's just like, I thought I was supposed to do that. And, and Back in the day, Robbie Robbie Gordon used to wear a catheter, yeah. and it had a hose that oh, would go out yeah. of the out of the suit into the into the into a hole into the floorboard and out the bottom of the car. See ya. Yeah, that's impressive. You need, you yeah. need a caution. You just take a leak. Yeah, take a leak. <laughs> there might have been there might have been a story. I was not there, but there is a there is a story that there might have been um, might have been a time when it fell out into the NASCAR hauler floor while he was in a meeting up there. <laughs> No way. That's that's the, is that a hearsay? That's, that's a hearsay story. That's a good story if it is in yeah. fact true. I feel like yeah. Robbie Gordon has some good stories. You might oh, need, we man. might need to get Robbie. You, on I guarantee the, you, Robbie show. Gordon has some good stories for sure. Well, we're gonna move on from the urinating, and we're okay. gonna talk about. The you never know where this show is gonna go. Yeah, yeah, we're we're good smooth coverage. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't even keep a straight face. All right, let's talk about the race weekend. Uh, I want to just first start treetops with Iowa because there was a lot of you know excitement and anticipation leading up to this because it was the first cup race there ever. Yeah. 
and we were out there and we experienced it, but I feel like they did a heck of a job putting on this event. Yeah. Well, I mean, it'd be my, more like uh, corn crops, top of the corn crops. <laughs> no, there were no trees in sight. That's for sure. Oh, yes, yeah. it's true. This I'm is just, corn crops. I'm just crops. giving you grief. Just, um, <laughs> but from a, from a visual and just listening and, you know, watching on social media, I, I was pretty sure that Iowa was going to be a great event just because of the fan participation, first event there for, for the cup cars and everything that they have done there in the past. I'd, I'd never been to a race at Iowa Speedway that wasn't sold out, whether it was an Xfinity race or a West to East race or whatever that was, it was, the place was always packed. I don't know how it's been, you know, in between the times that I went to, to now, but always good to see a racetrack mm -hmm. pack like that, getting into the Midwest, into a different region, always opens up the, you know, the enthusiasm for new fans or existing NASCAR fans to be able to get to the racetrack. And when you do that, that also allows, um, that allows the sponsors to have enthusiasm. I saw the Bush light car, you know, yeah. it had a corn scheme on the car, but you see Hy-Vee uh, activating around the racetrack as they've done with, with Indy cars. So brings new sponsors, new people. And that is always um, good because it makes a race that is easy to sell from the marketing department for sure. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Shout out to everyone in Iowa. You guys yes. came out in drones. Appreciate that. Uh, you earned that race. They deserve it to Kevin's point. Like people have been going out there for a long time to watch racing. And so to have a cup race after 20 years of that place mm -hmm. being, you know, basically being functioning, they, they deserved it. A couple of things about it that I really loved the high V thing, uh, high V activating and putting up the suites in a way that they do for the Indy car. I think that was huge. Um, it looked great. Uh, the backstretch when there's where there's no grandstands and you can park your camper and sit around from the backstretch into oh, turn yeah. three and four. That's like old school. That's like they got to watch our rehearsal. Oh our yeah, they were, we were, yeah, we were rehearsing <laughs> on the backstretch, backstretch first thing in the morning. morning. Good morning, everybody. How's uh, everybody doing? <laughs> just yelling at him. Um, but chief I, of hype over here. Just, I was hype. hyping him up yeah. at he was nine a.m. Even at yeah, it was early. early. Yeah. But the, I think that's that's true. Like. That's us. That's NASCAR. Pulling mm -hmm. your camper up, being able to camp out, watch the race right there. And then, okay. you know, hats off to everybody at NASCAR because it's the same group that puts on the show week to week mm -hmm. that had to go out and yeah. get that track prepared. So all in all, around the whole thing, it was great. Loved it. Everybody here's my, here's my one B from sitting at home. Here we go. Race started too late. It, uh, I'll give you that. Didn't okay. really know where the USA Network was. Um, is, that, is that your fault, though? I mean... My TV didn't pick it up for me, so I have YouTube TV, and and I was like, USA. Are you going to recognize that the race is on USA? And then I so I had to go find mm -hmm. the channel. Usually, it just pops up everything that you watch. Apparently, we don't watch much USA Network in in our house. Yeah. Um, so maybe next week it'll pick it up for me, you, unless you know, it disappears to Peacock. You know, <laughs> you know USA. You can you know on YouTube TV you can kind of set it and it'll remind you. I know. That, okay, and, and so maybe I watched it this week, so it'll it'll pop up. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe whatever you need well, pops. I don't know, but I don't understand why. I don't understand why we started so late. I don't know either. The Sunday night thing was a little weird. Yeah, yeah. to me, I think I, it was ten thirty at night. I was it was late. it was past my bedtime. I was gonna say he doesn't want to stay up late, so that was probably not a well, favorable I mean, choice. Think about how his... you guys all got home. I it's know. definitely not. It's definitely yeah, not it's tough. The start time is definitely <laughs> not. Um, taking into consideration anything about the teams because they mm -hmm. all got home at two or three o'clock in the morning. I do miss the Saturday night races. Uh, yeah. Saturday just never, Saturday just never does good on TV. TV I know. Yeah, right. right? The TV ratings well. are just not as good on, on Saturday. It has to be on Sunday. And maybe they put it later for the first one to kind of dip into the, the prime time pieces of it. And, yeah. and, um, but I mean, they had, they had the U S open on, on NBC and it ended, mm -hmm. it ended well before the, the start of the race. Mm -hmm. So, so we could have interesting, back it. but okay. it was, Need to be earlier. Can we can we get that handled? Maybe get some it earlier, earlier and earlier sure start times. Kevin please. knows exactly yeah. where USA is. <laughs> yeah, I, I found USA. If we go to the peacock, if if these practices go to the peacock app, I'm just not sure that I'll have to. I just might have to skip practice. That's too far. <laughs> That's too much. Too much. Right? Too much. Um, so Ryan Blaney though was the guy who got it done, which is really cool. And you referenced it. Why are you give me that look? I, I just, I just, I just. But I already knew. But you said it publicly on the stage. 
now he's the first driver to win a truck Xfinity Cup race there. Yeah. He oh, won that's not what he's referring series. to. No, that's not what, that's not what he's referring to at oh, all. Oh, you're no, right. I mean, he's talking about how he yeah, said well, he would be the last week. Hey, last who said Ricky Stenhouse was the one? She did say. I can't believe that. That's what a great run by those, by those guys. <laughs> you both nailed it. I don't even remember who I picked. Exactly. You picked Denny Hamlin. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That, he that, got lapped two times. So <laughs> he one week away from the racetrack, and I'm just totally out of touch, you, I guess. You no, need to get back to the track. You lost that was it. surprising. It was from the drop mm-hmm. of the green. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was terrible. He had a minus yep. eight like halfway through the first stage mm-hmm. of the positions, and then by the end of dropping. it, yeah, by the end of it, Larson was on his bumper mm-hmm. asking yeah. him to lap him. They had a few situations there together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Those that was two. Interesting. Yeah. It was. Kind of I was shot. You know, I think going back to Blaney, though, I, yeah. you know, I think. Those guys have been on the cusp. I mean, you look at um, St. Louis and yeah. some of the races that they've been a part of. It's it's definitely been good performance for the, for the twelve car lately from a speed standpoint, and they just hadn't capitalized on any of the days that that they've been in position to to win those races. And end of the race, I mean, he just dominated the mm-hmm. the end of that race. And I think really when the five car fell out, that was pretty much going to be the closest competition that he had yep. in, in my opinion um you know the, the situation with the five and the 99 it was mm-hmm. that was kind of a weird deal and, and you know you could definitely see that the 99 come up the racetrack and kind of get into the left rear quarter panel of the five and 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 wrecked him but um you know the five definitely shot in a hole that was that was pretty tight but once the five car was out, I felt like it was Blaney's race to to lose at at that particular point, and they just had a they had a great weekend uh, all around, and and were able to to finally put themselves in victory lane. Had his whole family there. I think yeah, they had eighty really people. Eight, 80 people. They kept showing them in yep. in the grandstands, and I think he was trying to figure out how to mm-hmm. get them down on onto the racetrack. He did a burnout. Never yeah. saw we'll Ryan Blaney burnout. <laughs> Wasn't very good, but he did a burnout. <laughs> yeah, um, and to me, him just doing a burnout <laughs> that was that. I mean. Uh, other than the the, the championship, championship I, don't, I don't remember ever seeing him do a burnout. Yeah, but if no. we're gonna do him, buddy, we're gonna have to put the pedal down a little bit harder and put on a little bit more of a show than that. He wants well, to take care of his equipment. Yeah, he wants to take his, care of his, his equipment. Reasoning behind that, whatever yeah. whatever it takes to get get twelve in victory lane, we'll, we'll, he, we'll take it. Yeah. Mamba was very excited. Uh, yeah, I was I was pretty stoked watching the end of that. Um, I, I last week we talked about it. I didn't want my picks have been ferocious, as everyone knows. Ferocious, like, ferocious. Is that a word? That's ferocious. a new word. This is a new word. Yeah. If I pick it's you, you usually it's horrendous. Don't. That's horrendous. Mixed with atrocious, atrocious, and atrocious. you get a ferocious. No, I, I can make up any word I want. That's I know. I've, I've lived ferocious. it all year. Yeah, <laughs> I've lived it all year. But those were actual real words. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's I don't just know. words that we didn't know. Exactly. Yeah, we... Exactly. Ferocious. <laughs> back to back to what I was about. Let to me say. write this down. <laughs> yeah, ferocious. Ferocious. <laughs> I don't have that on there. I said that the twelve ferocious, the twenty four, both needed really good days last week. You did, and look where they were. One, two, and they're gonna turn You're this so thing around. Smart. Sometimes she's. Listen, I wonder how you would spell horocious. Definitely not. Is it W H O? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope when I hope when they clip this that they put like the math from the Hangover, like I don't know. Kevin trying to. <laughs> That's a weird looking word. It is because it's not a word. <laughs> I mean, All right, so Brian Blaney, though, guys, yeah, that that was a. A huge moment for him. Yeah. I interviewed him before the race, and he seemed really confident because even in qualifying, like he knew he had a good piece, um, and obviously had a lot of extra added motivation with his family there. Saw his parents mm. in the airport this morning; they still seemed jacked up about the win. So speed fixes all problems. There you go. When you it have speed, says. it's just like Christopher Bell. You can get over oh, yeah. your situations that are week after week causing problems, causing issues, bad pit crews. If your car is fast as a mm-hmm. driver. You're yeah. way more relaxed. Yeah. Well, right? you led me right there. Oh boy. To Bell because I yeah. wanted to give that team a, some credit because they were yes. in a backup car and what a performance that was. That's the kind of team you want if you're going to be primed for a championship. People who can get through the adversities. That was impressive. You just never know when that adversity is going to strike, and you have to be able to do exactly what Christopher Bell and his team did. They have to be able to rebound mentally, let that go. They put in a lot of hours getting yeah. that car prepped. Um, so I don't know if that was you know, lack of prep from the shop or these cars do take a long time to prep correctly, but they put the time in to, to make sure that that car was, was, was ready to go. So I think, um, you know, it's when you have the speed that, that bell did, his car would not fire off at all. Right. And, but he had the long run speed and, and they had, they were able to work on their car because I think when everybody went back for the race, 
the lap times were so much faster than they were at the test. Uh, the, the tire test was only seven hours because it rained and, and they, they were limited on, on time. So I don't think they really got to run the track in like they needed to, to get a real indication of, of where they were. But we saw a lot of right front tires, uh, have, have issues. Yes. And that's going to come from, you know, the camber not being right or the air pressure being too low, um, because we saw a lot of cars just run no problem. Mm -hmm. And so I think there was a lot to be learned. That's the great part about these inaugural events is yeah. you just, you have so many unknowns that you don't have the answer to. Um, those questions and it makes for an interesting race because you got the tires going down you got guys spinning out um only thing i wish they would have done is is pave the whole corner evenly it was <laughs> the know. racing was the racing was better than i thought it was going to be yeah to, to be dead honest with you it was it was better uh they were able to race you know too wide i wish we would have had the corners end evenly that that one lane that that stuck out off of two you know, mm -hmm. 30 feet 20 feet farther than off of both corners. Oh, both corners. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, it looked weird. And, you know, so hopefully they, I would repave the corner. Yeah. yeah I was you say, say no. No, no, no. I think, I think they're, I think the plan is yeah, to I think do so. I think that there it was a lot of, let's see how this goes. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, it went, went really well. So let's finish off this. I, from what I was told at track, it was a timing thing that there wasn't enough time from when they could pave to, mm. um, when the race was like, yeah, because in Iowa, I guess there's a weather situation with okay. when you can start that type of right. paving. So, well, just in case you're wondering, you're going to have a race next year. So feel free to start your paving process now. Are you breaking news? Um, no, no. I mean, I'm just assuming that it, the way that it all went, it should, if we don't go back to Iowa, it's, it's because it flooded. I don't know. Yeah. No, <laughs> maybe it was, it was you can tell I'm serious when my eyebrows go up. <laughs> Double eyebrow raise. I yeah. do have a serious. question for you. Yes. So when you're, so first track, right? And you're talking about Christopher Bell having long run speed, but we also were a little bit worried about the tire situation. When you're dry, when you're a driver like that, and you're like, "Man, I know once we get going, we'll be really good." Are you a little bit nervous trying to get into your window of you know your speed, your maximum speed window, versus the competition? Or are you just like, "No, we're just gonna go after." You know what I mean? I think you just have to. I think you have to understand where your car is. Mm -hmm. I think all of them are nervous. Because they, they use, as a driver, you see all those tire scenarios and you just, you know that at any moment those tires can pop yep. and that's just part of a repave. And I think, I think in Christopher Bell's case, I think they went listening to his crew chief talk, uh, during the race, I think they went conservative on the right front cambers and pressures and, and the car just didn't go very good at the beginning of the run because it wasn't that aggressive. They wanted to make sure that they, that they finished the race. So I, I, you have to be prepared to, you know, to crash in, in, in those moments. And that's just part of the game. Um, but you also have to be able to make smart decisions along the way, like the 20 car did in order to put themselves in a position to, to win the race. And, and, um, in order to win the race, you have to finish the race. So that was, uh, I think that was a decision that, that they made from a team standpoint going in, into the, into the Sunday. So one team that did not finish the race would be Kyle Bush. And I have a couple things I want to talk about here with him, but first just his race. Cause it seemed like he was poised to have a solid day, but then he was plagued with a whole bunch of different issues from tires, power steering. He said one of the next gen parts failed. What'd you make of his day? Well, I'm not sure, but I, I thought at one moment I heard them say that he had touched the, touched the fence. Maybe not, yeah. I, but if he did, um, <clears throat> you know, that, that might open the, the debate as to whether it was just a failure, but uh, they did have a failure in the, in the right rear. Uh, it looked like it, one of those next gen parts that he was referring to uh, definitely <laughs> broke, but I don't know how hard the wall contact was or if there was contact uh, with, with another car um, like I thought I heard, but it, it's a, you know, I felt like he was going to run in the top 10 easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like that they, they were definitely poised to, to do that, but that thing just right now, it just seems like that eight car is plagued with problems and, and everything mm -hmm. that, that keeps happening to them and week after week. Anything that could go wrong seemingly has gone wrong over the last couple of weeks, but I, we were listening to his interviews too. And I felt like he handled it well. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he was with Chris, uh, Chris Wilner on, um, MRN, MRN mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, you know, I, we felt like we were going to have a good run. You know, he didn't, he wasn't like taking shots at anything necessarily other than, you know, the part. Um, but he took it in stride. It seemed like he was, ha you could, he sounded optimistic about having speed. I mean, I think they're 31 points below the cut now, so they can still point their way in. And maybe this is a step in the right direction because Sonoma, they're also going to finish 
about mm-hmm. fifth or sixth, and he was about to back to back that. Yep. So this is a tough, this is a tough stretch. But uh, Kyle Busch taking on water pretty, yeah, pretty it's, quickly. It's been a rough couple of weeks for him for sure. And um, with the announcement of Martin Truex Jr. obviously leaving Joe Gibbs Racing, now people are kind of talking about that seat in the future and what have you. And Bob Pockris asked Kyle over the weekend if he'd be open to Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs Racing, to his response was, anything's possible always. Oh, no. What do you think that message he is sending there? Yeah, well, to me, a a message like that just opens Pandora's box to letting all of us critique, criticize what that, speculate what that means. But I I, I can see thinking that, but I don't know why you would say that unless you were not happy with the deal that you had Mm -hmm. and opening the door to a Joe Gibbs conversation or a Hendrick conversation. Um, and knowing, I think he said at the end of that, you know, that he has another year on his deal at, at RCR. Um, man, that's just like a kick in the teeth to the guys and and gals that are, that are working on your car, right? Not to, to not be committed a hundred percent in your answer to the team that you're driving for, unless you were looking for a way out. That's how I took it yeah. because I don't know why you would say that if you were happy and, and wanting to, to work through the scenario that you had. So those, those, that comment to me totally blows the door open for speculation and all the speculating on, what happens with Kyle Busch, where he's at with RCR, what the scenario is with RCR. Um, it's been a tough stretch for for the eight car and, and everybody on that team with everything that they've had go wrong. And now you've got those comments. And sure, you know, he, you know, he might have just been, I don't know. I, I mean, it seems to me like he's just throwing it out there to see what the options are on the table. Probably. Right? That's what just it seems. presenting it publicly yeah. so that people are aware that he might be looking, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, at the last time that we had a, uh, a Kyle Bush quote like this was towards the end of the uh, JGR tenure that he had. He, he was talking about his contract and what have you. And so, but that was towards the end. This is like right in the middle. Like he has another whole year and he even told Bob in that interview that, or in that, you know, back and forth that he has a no talk clause. Like no one can talk to them. No one can talk to him about coming or buying, buying him out of his contract. Like, But in case you didn't know, I'm interested. Yeah. In case you yeah. didn't know, if you want to talk to me, yeah. I'll let your boy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm your guy. Yeah. Give me a call. Like, what are we doing? But like, again, Kyle knows how to work this. Thing. Like yeah. he knows how to work. But does he? Yeah, is that been, right? I I don't know if it's I wouldn't say it's right. I wouldn't have done it that way, but is Joe Gibbs Racing going to hire him to drive the 19 car? Uh probably not. But maybe? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, how are those terms that he left uh, with Toyota no and, and Joe Gibbs? Is it Joe Gibbs that was mad or I mean, the whole truck team is gone? Mm-hmm. Is it is there has to be some sort of frustration because he got he got you know, they they moved on from from what he was doing at at Toyota racing Mm -hmm. uh, with his truck teams and everything he had going and Joe Gibbs racing. So there was obviously something not right there Mm -hmm. because otherwise they would, they would have worked it out. So it's a, it didn't, now it just becomes more complicated because you've thrown all this out there and is he happy at at SHR? But I I don't see any scenario that, that Joe Gibbs racing hires Kyle Busch back. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I think you want to start looking to the future, right? And you want to, you want to look at someone like, a Chase Corey Briscoe. Heim, uh, a Chase Briscoe to so get younger and I mean get, everything I hear is Chase going. Briscoe. Yes, every everything yes. that everybody keeps talking else. about is mm-hmm. is Chase Briscoe is going to go in the nineteen car. And That's, I think Christopher Bell was a big proponent of him as a fellow dirt racer. That was yeah. kind of the guy he labeled he thought would be a good teammate for him. Yeah. So, and it's, and so he threw out the the Hendrick piece of it too. Returning I, to Hendrick. I mean, yeah. who at Hendrick is who at Hendrick would be vacating a seat? Like, yeah, I mean, he basically got thrown out of Hendrick, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, when when he was driving the driving the Xfinity car and everything that he had going on there. So, I'm very confused. I'm so confused about making those comments about driving at 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 Gibbs and and Hendrick because I just I don't know what that does for you in in making your situation better at RCR. It's a I kick think in the pants. Too, one of your your it seems like one of your bigger issues with this is just like for the team and the people who are working for him now and what that is saying to them. Yeah, that, that's my concern. My concern is RCR and his team and mm-hmm. and the position that it puts in them them in just not being a hundred percent sure that 
in your answer and in, in what you say because perception is the perception is going to be nine tenths of nine what you think. Yeah. And so now the door's open. The mm-hmm. door has has been blown completely wide open as to what all this means for for mm-hmm. Kyle Busch and, and RCR and and you know is he peeking over his shoulder looking looking to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't, I personally don't see a scenario where he goes back to Hendrick or Gibbs. Let's, let's flip that though. Right. So Kyle says his stuff and then maybe RC's like, okay, I, I RC's not afraid to play this game too. Well, we like, saw what happened with Tyler. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so maybe RC's like, who, who are the options? Who's out here? Oh, Graxon's out here. Josh Berry's out here. There's some guy. There's some people that Y'all are out stirring here. the freaking pot today. I mean, <laughs> hey, listen, he started it. We're just, hey, we're just well, looking I, at. I options. just, I just landscape. totally don't understand. I do not understand the comments. Uh, why you would make those comments? Uh, if you were, if you, unless you were just not happy with the current situation, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, a little strange. Because I, I don't see any scenario where he goes back to either one. Okay. I think he's where he's at. I think. Yeah. Well, we will continue to follow that story and see what else may develop from it. We always kind of give some attaboys, too, from the race. And there were some good names, or new names, I guess you could say. Go ahead. What? Go ahead. What do you want? You know exactly what you want to say. I was going to say Carson Hosevar, Todd Gillen, and Justin Haley. They were up there in the top 15. Oh, I thought you were going to just Well, yeah, we kind of touched on Ricky already. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but those guys. I would have doubled down if I was I thought you were going to double down right there. I can never double down him. Stenhouse did have a great run. (laughs) Did have a great run. So good job, Caitlin. Pulled that one one out of your hat. Um, (laughs) But I think it was was interesting to start that race. You talk about Hosevar, and Mm -hmm. he got loose under Zane Smith and wiped out. Corey. Hit Zane and then Zane got got hit and and wiped out Corey. So all three Spire cars were uh, <laughs> not on not on uh, a good footing right off the bat. But mm-hmm. Hosevar is he's good and mm-hmm. and and you know he's been very fast. He's been very fast in everything that he's driven. The thing I like about Carson Hosevar this year is he's learning and finishing. Mm-hmm. He is not spinning out and driving over his head, which I think a lot of people thought he was going to do. Me being one of them. Uh, on much more of an occasion than than he has, and he um, he's done a great job in in kind of tempering his 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 speed with making sure that the car is going in the right direction and and finishing races. So uh, he's consistently positioning himself inside the top fifteen now. Yeah, he works really hard, and his yeah. team really loves their driver, and yeah. he loves the team. So like that continuity is really like that. Where that's a big one. Continuity. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really good. He's looking at his notes. Is that Ferocious. Spoken, right? Uh, is really good for all all things and results. Uh, someone I want to give some love to is Justin Haley. Yeah. I think if Justin Haley and Tic Tac, if they can figure out a way to steal one at like Chicago. They could like sneak through they can the round. Sneak through a round or two. They run consistently – you know, like in the top 15 and people might be like, well, you know, this, you only get, you know, what, 12 to the next round. Yeah. But if you hang around and people have bad days, you can kind of slide through a round. So I would, I would watch out. They, can they have consistently, one. Justin Haley has consistently run well now. And it's not, now it's not a surprise. No, he's, no. Yeah. He's consistently put himself in contention to, to have good weekends and do things in that, in that 51 car that I think a lot of, it has caught a lot of people off guard, but I don't think for, for us, it has caught us off guard from a Justin Haley standpoint. Mm-hmm. Right. I just think that Rick Ware has made that 51 car a lot better with his alliance with RFK. Yeah, they it's bought good, in. Yeah. Good to see that for sure. So that was the Iowa race. There were some news items that came out of the race weekend. Martin Shrex Jr. Officially announcing his retirement from full-time cup competition. Um, this is, we kind of knew this was obviously coming. We talked about it on the last episode and you were pretty vocal that you were like, I think he just needs to make a decision. And now it's been made and we can celebrate him the rest I'm, of the year. I'm so happy about that because Martin Truex Jr. has been a lot a, a, a fixture in the cup series for a number of years now mm-hmm. he's been around this sport for a long time has a tremendous amount of respect from from the competitors in the garage and i just i know martin probably would have rather just said you know i'm done after the last race and not have to not have to deal with it but i'm really happy that we get to celebrate what martin has done uh he's a champion uh, he's he's a great person and he's going to he's going to probably do better with retirement than I do with it because he's got a great uh, fishing habit that, that <laughs> That's right. uh you know he's 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 definitely put some time in over the last couple of years and in, in uh, making that better but 
um, I'm, I'm really happy that we have half the year to, to celebrate Martin and, and what he's accomplished in our sport. That's yeah. big for the fans because they'll have one more opportunity That's to come out That's the part that you forget, him. right? Yeah, it's like just they the, deserve to it's see It's the that. part that you forget. And, and Marcus Smith was the one that reminded me about that. Mm-hmm. He's like, it's not just about you. There's a lot of people that have rooted for you for a long time. And giving the fans the opportunity to go one last time mm-hmm. and watch their guy race is yeah. important. And the tracks, I remember, would do a lot of tributes for you, too. Like on the yeah. wall, you know, whether it was something on the wall or whatever, there would be different things to commemorate your career, which is always cool. I'm sure they'll start doing that for him, Yeah, too. I'm sure I would be highly disappointed if it didn't start at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Me, too. Yeah, one of his home better start quick. <laughs> Listen, if y'all don't start off the rip, the I'm MTJ going Yeah, I'm going tributes. up there to do uh, driver intro. So I'm gonna make sure oh. I bring do a little something special for that because he's one of he's one of our guys. He's a New England guy. We, That's we, right. We take him in. Even we take from, him even in, even though he's <laughs> from Jersey. But uh, you know, two time two time Xfinity champ, back to back. Uh, one time NASCAR Cup champ. He's a walking Hall of Famer. He will 34 be four Cup wins. Yeah, he'll be in there uh, in the Hall of Fame at some point very shortly. Yeah. I'm sure close to first ballot. You know, yeah, for when, sure. When it gets to that point, so uh, I'm glad that he listened to the. Kevin Harvick Happy Hour Podcast. <laughs> and so yeah, we're taking all the credit. Said, all man, the credit. those guys have a they have a good idea. <laughs> we're we taking really, all the credit. We should really do that. And I and yeah. it was interesting to hear him talk about that feeling of, you know, it's the right time. I was in that same boat every year. It was like, all right, should we do it? What what's the right timing? And I think for for Martin, I think there was just something. He said it has nothing to do with performance, but it's been a pain in the butt for him mm-hmm. for him this year as far yeah. as Things that have happened, losing races, having to deal with all the drama. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, you just get tired of dealing with all that yeah. stuff, and you just want to go be normal and do fish. normal things yeah. and fish. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to go fish, so let him go fish and drink beer and enjoy yeah. all the things that he's accomplished in the sport and have fun for the next 19 weeks. Our, our Fox Sports teammate, Tom Brady, sub teammate, he was back and forth on his retirement because he could still play at a high level. It's hard. And well, Martin and, can still play. And he can, and Martin can still mm-hmm. race at a high level. Martin, it, it can still win races. So like, you're like, okay, I can still beat most of these guys on mostly any day, mm-hmm. but do I want to keep putting all this high level of work to stay yeah. there? Yeah. That's the hard part. And I think for the team, it's just a, like we talked last week, it's now it puts them in a better spot to for say, planning. okay, we have a definite plan. We're going to do this with Martin till the end of the year. And we're going to, I'm sure in the next few weeks, I would assume that they'll decide who they're going to put in the 19 car and they can move on with that and start working towards, mm-hmm. you know, new, new priorities and new goals with, with solid, solid plans. So good for Martin Trex Jr. Taking that next step in life. We look forward to watching him though for the remainder of the year. So I think it's time for your, oh, your segment. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, if you're ready for I'm it. Good. The sips, well, Mamba yeah. social sips. Gosh, I would tell my kids to not drink like that, but go ahead. Well, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not your kid, you know? I'm your nephew. It's different. I don't know. <laughs> my face is on your mug, though. That's pretty entertaining. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Mamba's Social Sips, your favorite segment of this show. Uh, listen, we're going to start. We're going back to jolly old England. I was just there, but we're jolly going back. Listen, so there is a um, Motorfest at Co- uh, Coventry event in england coventry coventry gosh you're on it today you need to get some sleep tonight. listen you're right that was ferocious you should see <laughs> you should see the word i don't know it's old english I think um, it's coventry. but there is a crash uh on track in this guy and whatever type of open wheel car he kept it was like a it's like an s and he hits one barrier oh, i saw that K-O'd so it. then it's... it seems like the throttle might have stuck and he hits the second Same. barrier and right next to the second barrier is a track marshal <laughs> and he wasn't standing behind it you're standing right in front of it so when that barrier it fell he would have been he was so lucky oh he would have been gosh, cooked that and it so fell hard. right behind him he just looks like oh Unreal. Yeah. I'm living right. I'm living right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's if, looking out. Yeah. So you guys saw that though, right? Yes. yes that, uh, what did, that was what did, crazy. It was pretty I, uh, I guess fantastic. You need to make sure <laughs> you keep the car on the track. So yeah. You know, was that a was that a high pucker factor moment? That was that happened so fast you had a that was a no pucker factor. <laughs> 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 it happened so fast you never had time to pucker. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, man. That could have been so, a lot yeah. worse. Yeah. So we're glad everybody's okay. Glad everyone's okay. Someone on someone on someone on Twitter was like, that was really dangerous of that driver. He yeah, should have I'm like yeah, because the driver meant to completely yeah. destroy. Sure he wanted to drive through those barriers. It <laughs> exactly. felt great. Really it cost him, cost him a couple hundred thousand dollars. Other than that, it was fine. Yeah. I'm sure he was totally on purpose. <laughs> what are we talking about? So coming back to, to Iowa, 
I don't know if you saw this, but over the over the weekend, sometime in between days, uh, oh. John Hunter Nemechek and Austin Dillon gave their kids uh, squirt guns, mm. and mm-hmm. they went around the DL lot and they found everybody. And it's you see, amazing. like this is a part where RC is getting just hosed down by yeah. these two kids, man. <laughs> it was great, and I bring that up because I feel like that's the part of the DL lot that we don't get, the fans don't get to see. So I was really glad that they were able to show that. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember, and it was covered pretty good. But I came out a couple. I guess it was more than a couple, several years ago into the parking lot at Pocono while we were waiting on a rain delay and Keelan is in a puddle with Brad Kozlowski and Tony Stewart <laughs> basically acting like a fish uh, swimming in the puddle in the parking lot. So there are that. quite a few things that, that go on in the in the motorhome lot that are very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> keeps it entertaining. Yes, oh, you never God. know what might happen. Especially as, well. especially as many kids that, that go around the motorhome lot now. There's a lot. That's now. right. That's there are, right. are kids uh, everywhere. Then talk. Speaking of kids and Keelan, uh, Keelan went back to Dominion the first time earlier this year when we Not were there. Pretty was it? You were with me. Probably one of his worst races that he mm. kind of put together, just from what he could have done and what he did. And then I feel like we go back there. And he does the exact opposite. And he's on a tear right now. He wins up yeah. there on a green-white checker. A well green-white checker. He started yeah. third. So yeah. he pushed the leader out and then yes. did what he had to do. Yeah, and he didn't He didn't slam him. He attached bumpers like you're supposed to do in Legend Car Racing and just moved him up one lane and got underneath him and did a great job. So it was the it was also the first retirement weekend <laughs> where I was able to go and be a part of the Cars Tour event and Keelan's Racing, our late model teams, all in one facility. So uh, we had a great event at, at Dominion this weekend with the Car Tour Series, and uh, they ran the Legend Cars with them. We had a Mini Tyrell's yep. uh, charity event this weekend oh, cool. uh, that, he, that nice. he does for all the kids uh, with, with cancer and uh, brought a bunch of the kids to the racetrack. Keelan gave his uh, little Mateo, uh, he gave him, he was the cancer patient that, that we had with us. Um, and Keelan gave him his trophy and That's you awesome. realize, you don't realize how lucky you are when you have kids and they're healthy. And mm-hmm. then you see a room full of kids who are not healthy and what the families are dealing with. But many Tyrell has uh, put on uh, uh, this event the last couple of years, great charity event that's become uh, a part of the Dominion Raceway Cars Tour event for the second year in a row now. They walked all the kids out on on stage and got to meet and, and, and uh, ride with their drivers in their cars uh, wow. uh, before practice. So just a, a fantastic weekend. But Keelan did a did a great job and proud of of his progress. We got to drive a got to drive a Mazda MX-5 Saw car that. this week for the first mm-hmm. time. Uh, at Carolina Motorsports Park, so that, that was go? that was uh, it went really well. It was I was I was impressed. You had so a really good weekend. It seems I had like. a great weekend. Yeah, love full that of energy and ready to go. Yeah. What's next? It's good. So, <laughs> well, speaking of what's next, so Bubba was racing out of the summer shootout, having in, the time of his life. In the, by the legend way. car. I, I I'm a high proponent of you should go race more things. Right? They don't really let the guys do it. If you can go run the shootout, guys, go run the shootout and just be a part of that and remember why you're doing it. Because when you're around the kids, you mm-hmm. remember that. Kevin, maybe you should go run the shootout. You can run the master's so. class. I'm not a legend car guy. Bubba's a legend car guy, and he raced on Monday. Wasn't so hot. Tuesday got a lot better, and I would expect this week when we go back that he'll be pretty close to being in the game. And he was having the time of his life last <laughs> week, running, running out there in the second half of the field trying to figure out the car trying to figure out the driving style because the tires are different. The engine is different, but just to see, and I remember this as, as a cup guy, when you're able to go to those events and just not really have anything to, to worry about and just having a good time and hanging out with the, with the people. Um, he had a smile from ear to ear and that, that makes me, that makes me happy when you, when you see guys out doing that. Yeah. Go support local short track racing. Yes, we've store, said that before, but summer shootout. we're going to keep saying it. Yeah, yep. it can't say it enough because that's that's For the sure. lifeblood of, of this whole thing. Good sips this week. Is oh, that it? Good sips. We yeah, yeah sips? we're, on to, we're on, to the, on to grading the burnout. So I'll mm. okay. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Your burnout grade. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Well, we kind of already know where mm. Kevin stands on it. So, so here's the thing, if you don't know. Ryan Blaney, your reigning Cup Series champion, does not do burnouts. He does not. He was told a long time ago by Dale Inman. Yeah, yeah, the story, yeah. Right? He told him, "Did you have you ever seen a jockey win the Kentucky Derby and then beat his horse <laughs> after?" <laughs> no, you don't. It's a good Drastic analogy, comparison. but Dra- like very. Like, yeah, you appreciate <laughs> the machine that that went that the thing that got you the win. So Ryan's always appreciated his car after he wins the race, the Cup Series, especially in the mm-hmm. Cup Series. He's only done like two burnouts. 
One was a championship. Which is fair. Which is uh, that's burn her down. Yeah, burn, burn it, it down. You, gotta burn yeah. that one you just down. want a title. And two was this one in Iowa. And I think because the family was there. Yeah. Had 80, 80 family members there. He, he got but, he did a little one. Still I will th- give the flag. I, I think I, I think um a Ryan Blaney that's just letting loose, I think the fans will just love. I think some of that is just, you know, he's trying to be respectful to Dale Inman and Roger Pinsky and Ryan Blaney's a fun guy. Ryan Blaney, you know, he has a very fun side to him, has a great personality. And I think if he just let it rip, I let think it rip. The, the fans would just yeah. really, embrace really, it. really yeah. gravitate and, and embrace him. Mm-hmm. And not that they haven't, but he's a champ. He's got, you know, he's swagger. got that personality and swagger to, to go along with it. Just let it rip, <laughs> Blaney. <laughs> let it rip, my guy. That's right. My guy. We know he listens. So yeah, he does listen I to would, I would say, day. I would say the burnout was weak. Um, but the fact that he did one, we broke the ice. That's right. Yeah. I'm Baby not going to grade it because it would be low. Um, but I think the next burnout that he does, I think he's just going to burn it to the ground. There just was burn it to the freaking ground, Blaney. There was a lot of smoke. There was a lot and of smoke. There was a yeah. lot of smoke, and he kind of got caught on the on the yeah. slow on the on the banking of this front stretch, and then he kind of came out of it, and it was kind of a nice little. I would have liked to see because we were watching. We're like, is he going to do it? Yeah, it was kind of weird though, right? Because he turned around (laughs) and he's waving to the crowd, and then he drove around. I think he was probably thinking about, should I do it? Should I I not do it? Yeah. And then he came back and he started doing donuts. Had a lot of smoke, but Mm -hmm. it was yeah, it wasn't very. It was a tame one, mild. Yeah, because you could hear the throttle control. It was like, you know, it wasn't yeah over the top. So we'll take it. We'll take it. Good job, Ryan Blaney. Job, Just Bobby. starting out with your burnouts. We'll see if they progress. All right. Time now for our last call and who we think can win in New Hampshire. So let's start with Kevin, like usual. I what think that I think that there are those tracks where people know that they want to put on a show and you get prepared for them. And with his recent retirement, do you really take I, my God? Damn it. Yeah. I, I am. Good. I mean, we can all go with Drew. X. No, we, we can. can. We can. Sure we can. It could be a, it's a sentimental the guy's, pick. He's the sentimental pick. Why? Mm-hmm. How could we go against Martin Truex Jr. for New Hampshire? Right. Yeah. If you're going to win, what a better storybook way to win for Martin Truex in his final year yeah. to go to New Hampshire and win the dang race. And he is going to be highly motivated pressure is going to be off off of him Mm -hmm. because he finally made the decision announced it it's over yeah he's going to have to answer some questions in the media center but it's all going to be happy go lucky from here on out for for (laughs) truex because he doesn't have to worry about it anymore so what a better way to do it he's got the cars to do it he's got the team to do it he's got the talent to do it i think he goes up there and gets makes it happen I, I, that was also my the, point, my pick. I was, so I, I'm just going to piggyback off of that. Yeah, okay. I was going to pick him, but because we know how bad my picks have been this year, I don't want to put that on him at all. And I do think uh, Josh Berry in the four at places mm. that there's a lot of off throttle time, the short tracks. I think coming off of Iowa, where he was really strong, I think they have some momentum for places like this. I think Josh Berry might be. I like that pick. Yeah, I like that yeah. pick too. And uh, those guys are highly motivated. They Obviously, are. I have, you know, some good communication with Rodney Steele and and seeing everything that that they've gone through and are going through mm-hmm. and going to have to go through mm-hmm. for the rest of the year. Uh, both of them looking to figure out where they're going to go. Uh, I think they're both highly motivated, and and yeah, I think he has a chance to win at Iowa if he doesn't crash under caution. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, some, it, sometimes you get. He hit the he hit the car in front of him so hard that it knocked the knocked the hood up, separated the splitter, and the performance of the car was was done. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm hearing that the the pad on the driver's side door bars came loose and he was trying to put mm-hmm. it back on. Uh, yeah. So I think that you know that it wasn't like he just ran into the car in front right. of him. He was trying to put the pad back on and the guy in front of him checked up and and but it wound up damaging his car bad enough to where it, it hurt the performance of the car for the rest of the day but they were in contention to to mm-hmm. win that race mm-hmm. um but he was running hard it, it remind, only takes one moment that's it it reminds yeah. me of josh williams last year he did the same thing since kv didn't since she's just piggybacking off of you i'm gonna throw a, an extra one in there because okay. it is a, a home race for him yeah. as well ryan priest oh. if there's one place that that he can get it done it, it'll be here in front of that New England crowd. He'll be highly motivated. He'll be highly mm-hmm. motivated yes. there. Too. Every time he goes to New Hampshire, he he wants to he wants to put on a show. Yeah. So mm-hmm. and very good at that racetrack. Yeah. But, okay. So votes of confidence for Ryan Priest, MTJ, 
and Josh Berry. Josh Berry. So, uh, what about Brad Kozlowski? Because he is your next guest, as you referenced. Yes. We'll be interviewing him for the Thursday episode. I am excited. I've wanted to interview Brad because I have so many questions about him going from Penske to RFK and just what that was like, um, what his thought process was when he left Penske, what he thought he was getting into, what he actually got into, and whether it affected the things that, that he did from the driving side, having to work so much on, on, the, on the ownership side. So lots of uh, interesting yeah. things to ask Brad. He's always a great interview. He I'm, is. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, okay. always a critical thinker, and like I, I love hearing his insight. That'll I'm going to ask him if I'm going to ask him if he's heard of this word. Ferocious. Ferocious. Can you? Can you do? Yeah, I bet he has. He's a smart guy. I mean, smart I'm sure. guys hanging yeah. on the same. But that's a dumb word because yeah. it's not a real word. <laughs> wow, man, she went right to you. <laughs> can, you can you? Can you? Can you? Was that like a? Was it's that like, like a talk it, to like, the hand? Yeah. Type? Like, I don't have. I don't know what to say to that right now. <laughs> okay. Can you? I do want to know one thing from Brad. Mm. He. He had two major rivalries, one with Carl Edwards and one with Kyle Busch. If you can get him to touch on that, just especially the Edwards one, because that one was I really, had the Edward one, okay, Edwards good. written down. Because yeah. it's so weird that those two guys, uh-huh. but Brad was different then than he is now. Yeah. He's kind of, yeah. you know, but we, it was a different guy. I know guy. Kevin likes a rivalry. He will happily well, ask. The rivalries pot. are great. They, they, are. they push you. They make you better. No, you push, <laughs> yeah. you push people into rivalries. You literally... I'm down not the, now. I'm We're not not the going only down person that's had a rivalry. <laughs> You're talking about Brad Keselowski and, and Carl Edwards having a rivalry, and he's got you named two right off the top. Okay, all right, all right. Kyle Busch. Okay, all right. All right, <laughs> we'll talk rivalries next week, maybe. Thanks so much for joining us on this edition of Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour. Make sure you continue to subscribe and like us on YouTube. You can leave a five star review as well on the podcast format, and we will see you after Loudon. <laughs>